the more we look at how do I run a business and grow a business according to what works for me and my mission and my purpose and who I am, the stronger we're going to be. And the people that are supposed to work with you both as a team and your clients will show up, right? We all, yeah. I mean, we all have a little bit of unique crazy and our unique crazy partners will show up. Hey there, and welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor, and business coach for ambitious women who are boldly taking their business to the next level. And I believe that building a successful business isn't about working 24-7 just to merely meet a revenue goal. What it does take is a unique blend of dedication to purpose, courageous action, and frequently sheer will to overcome the odds that lead to meaningful impact and experiencing a life well lived. In each episode, you'll get to know the women and men who are unafraid to put it all on the line as they share the stories of success and failure that have made them incredible leaders and the magic they gift the world with. As you're listening, and I hope finding value, don't forget to share the Tribe of Leaders podcast with all of your other entrepreneurial friends and to follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hey Tribe, on today's show, it is, again, podcast takeover time. And in this episode, my dear friend, Leslie Short, who was on the podcast, and you definitely want to go back and check out her episode, it's episode 118, is taking over the reins and interviewing me. So Leslie is the founder of the Cavu Group. She um, helps corporations with DEI training and leadership and really how to build better businesses. And in the episode that we did back in January, she talks about what that looks like and how you can incorporate DEI into your business on all levels. She's absolutely brilliant, like brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Her background is incredible. She's lived all over the world. She's done a number of different things. I am inspired daily by her. So I highly encourage listening to her, as I said, on episode 118. And on today's show, we talk about a number of different things. A couple of the big takeaways that I had upon re-listening to this interview is really how I have taken a lot of different negative experiences, not only turned them into learning experiences, but made them into successes and made them into lemonade, if you will. Um, I also dive into, and I don't think I've done this before in previous um, podcast takeovers, but I talk about why I only work with women and why that's so important to me and to our future. And then we also have a really cool conversation about the difference between putting quality out there and holding up your success in your business because you're trying to be a perfectionist. So let's dive in and I hope you enjoy. Hey, Leslie, I am so excited to have you back on the podcast today. And we are doing another podcast takeover, so I'm going to be letting you lead. But I wanted to kind of just recap for everybody. Like we met, I think it was almost a year ago. And I knew from the second that we started talking that we were going to be friends. And then during that conversation, you said you were moving from New York to Philly. So now we really are friends and we get to hang out socially and drink bubbles together, which, you know, I love immensely. So thank you so much for, I'm like, I'm so honored that you, you're you going to be here. Well, you are here. Um, so share with everybody just a little bit about who you are and what you do, and then I'll let you take it away. Uh, well, thank you. You know, I'm excited to be here. Yes, my new fast friend that will be forever. So you have made my transition so amazing, and I appreciate that. And the invite to interview you. So just quickly about myself. I'm the owner of the Cabo Group, and what we do is I may diversity, equity, inclusion, and culture strategists. Um, I work with brands, corporations, individuals to build their culture and or leadership. And I really say not, I really don't like to say and or, but with leadership. And I do that through the diversity, 
I pray and push Lynn. How do you build a better business through that? Yeah. And I love all the work you're doing. So everybody should follow Leslie on Instagram and LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You can follow the Cobble Group. Yeah. They can follow me too. They can follow the Cobble Group. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love, I mean, I love your posts and your articles and, and general statements, but I love the murals that you post from your walks around Philly. I love that. I, you know, I started in New York and I just love art and I just respect art and the artist so much. And that's the one thing I would say that I'm loving about Philly is that they make space in this city. They leave no wall unturned um, mm-hmm. for an artist to be able to create and to share that. And um, to be able to share your art with the world is not always available to everyone. So there's really an equitable piece to that that uh, warms my heart. Yeah, I love it. We have such a strong mural arts program, and it is one of the, I think, shining glories of Philly. I agree. I absolutely agree. So, good. so are we getting started? We're getting started. I'm ready. So for everyone, Amy has allowed me to do this takeover, but she does not know any of the questions. So we're going to jump in and jump around. It's going to be a little personal, a little business. And we're going to try to stay focused because we go off a little <laughs> tension yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so a question and exercise that I love to do when I go into companies or I sit with individuals is the statement, I am. So I want you to tell me, I, tell you, I am, but you can't say anything about work. So you oh. can't say, me. yes. Oh, so, so there's I no am. like, I am a business owner or like, no. All right. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I can play with this one. I have practice because <laughs> this is one of the, the exercises I do with my clients, particularly when I'm trying to get them to see how amazing they are. And the one that I love the most for me is okay. I am divine goddess. Yeah. Tell me more about that. One second. My nose just decided to run. Of course. Edit this part out. <laughs> so... I don't even remember the last, the first time I had to do this whole exercise, but I had to come up with like 10 I am statements, which seemed impossible um, at the time. Now I have like 60, but to really embody everything. And again, this is me, not does it apply for everybody else. It was really accepting that there's a divinity in all of us that I believe we have and that I wanted to be able to pull in from the feminine because we live in such a masculine world. So, and I like to play a little bit. So like my kids call me less now, but they, for a long time they were calling me Empress Emmy. So goddess <laughs> was kind of like the next step up. Okay. So it kind of embodies all of those pieces for me, that little bit of play and silliness, but really also that reminder of who I am in any given moment. And it helps me stay in a place of striving for the next level. I love that. So then that takes me to the next thing that kind of rolls into it. Why do you do what you do? I, um, I think since like high school, I've been very clear that I, my purpose is to be able to help people. And that's looked like a number of different things over the year. I feel a lot of empathy for just general humankind. And it started initially, um, I did a lot of nonprofit work. I worked for the development office in college and it was really cool to be able to um, not only raise money for the school, but to be able to do some scholarships, that type of stuff. Worked for a nonprofit right after college. And... That serving piece then transitioned as I got, well, I was married, but had Brian, my oldest, and he had digestive issues, which was really the catalyst for me starting all of my businesses. But the first thing I did was become a personal chef because after I healed him, I wanted other people to understand how healing food is. So, uh, and I was starting to really get on the, let me interrupt that whole thought too with so this is the first squirrel. All right. <laughs> one of those weird moments for me, and I, I don't know if everybody else ex- has these experiences, but Brian was really sick. I was starting to buy more local food from farmers uh, in the area where we were living. 
and developing those relationships. Like that's the cool thing about buying local food is you're talking to the people who are growing it and they're talking, telling you all these different things. And at the same time, I was bombarded with this constant seventh generation, um, the cleaning products message about toxic chemicals and all this other stuff. And I was learning more about organics and it, it just, everything kind of coalesced into food is really healing and how we can do that by eating different things and understanding what's what's um, really healthy. So it's been kind of this evolution of how do I serve people and now, you know, mostly women, but how do I serve at my best level so that I can help people the most so I can impact and leave my my lasting mark. But I want to go back for a second because I want your listeners to really hear a message that you just gave without saying the words. And that was taking a situation that could have been bad or running to doctors or just stressful and turning it in to a positive and turned it into a business. And there was a lot of that. And maybe it grew as you continued to work in it. it and it wasn't a purposeful idea. I'm going to be the chef. I'm going to do that. And I think sometimes that's where um, people miss their mark. Because they're so busy in the moment of whatever's wrong that they don't always see an opportunity to develop a love or light of something out of necessity yet at one point. Yeah, I am really good at taking bad situations and one, learning from them, but turning them into lemonade. <laughs> um, and I am also like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm very purpose driven. So for me, I can't do something unless I believe in it, like 120% believe. And once I'm in that space, then there's no stopping me. And particularly with my kids, I have a far too strong mama bear reaction. Like there is nothing, (laughs) there's no experience anybody wants to have with me if I am in pissed off mama bear. And, you know, and that's probably not going to change regardless of their age. Oh, no, no, but, oh, no, 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 no. And my younger guy's like, he's like, be careful. She's tiny. <laughs> and he's and now so, like four. Whenever they get their mate, <laughs> I don't want to see you on that show. I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're both very independent. Thank God. <laughs> You know, and I think that's what you probably want to give your clients, uh, the independence to, and you tell me if I'm wrong, to make decisions, to move forward, to see beyond themselves, the way that I always put it, and to have an opportunity to see themselves as maybe sometimes others see them. So my question is, what changes have you seen maybe in the last year? from your clients? Do they come to you and know what they want and determine what they want? Or do you help them shape into not only what they want, but something they may not need into something else? How does that work? So a little bit of both. Um, Most of my clients come to me because they're frustrated and they know there's something bigger, better, greater for them out there and they don't know how to get there through their business. And I think I mean, my most fun example right now, because the path is so clear, is my client who has a massage studio where she was like, all right, I'm going to invest in you and 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 me, but um, I'm going to also move locations and double my size and I have no plan and I don't know what to do and I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> Right. If she needs her gone, I, I'm happy to come in and help her yeah. on that part. Um, and she's like, I'm going to trust that it's all going to happen. So over this last year, she's moved into the space. She's hired new massage therapists. So she's her team's grown. She's added yoga and hired that team. She's developed the team so that they are incredibly tight and they have just such an amazing culture and she I think has tripled her sales in the last year so she's running she came in kind of in that like I'm still in service mode even though I'm not practicing massage and I have these people who do stuff and 
And that's all great too. She's running the business. She knows what all of her numbers are. She knows what the projections are and whether or not she's going to meet them and what to do when she's off. You know, somebody every once in a while, she's like, we just have a week where everybody cancels. (laughs) It's it's like, right. It's it's like, and it's, you know, we'll be prepared. Right. So how does she fill those spaces now? Right. Like that. So instead of letting things stop her, uh, but that's what I love seeing is I know there's something bigger and I know I can do it. I just need help to get there and really helping these women shift into the CEO role because they don't see themselves as such until they start doing um, some, I'm air quoting, but some of the things of of really running your business and being able to step back from the day-to-day stuff. So without giving away, because we want people to come to you, two things someone needs to know how I'm going to work with you if they, when they sign up. Yeah. So I think number one is know that I will hold you accountable. I like, I don't forget stuff. I keep detailed notes on all of my clients. So when we have a call and I'm like, all right, your homework is blah, blah, blah. I will be following up with you. Right. And I have not had another coach, nor have I heard of another coach that does the accountability or keeps their clients as accountable as I do. And that's been the feedback from my clients too, um, because they've all worked with other coaches at this point. Yeah. And and that's what helps because we're going to explore, well, why didn't you get this thing done? And sometimes there's a good reason and sometimes they're hiding. If I can draw that out and help them move through the things that they're afraid of, that's how they're going to level up. Um, So why women? That may sound like a crazy question if someone's listening, but why women? Why not anyone that has a business? I am really passionate about seeing more women succeed. And particularly recently, because I've been, as I do more research, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But like only one and a half percent of all women owned businesses make over a million in revenue. And on average, women earn like their revenue, their sales is like 300 and I think 63,000 a year, where the guys on average, it's 723,000. And we also tend to keep ourselves playing small, even though we've got big dreams, like, oh, it's too much. Like women aren't acknowledging enough that they can achieve their big dream, that it is possible. And I want to be able to give them that place to do that and have that safety net and have somebody hold their hand and cheer them on and push them so that they can do that because we're the ones that are going to create change. Well, let's just be honest. Women don't pitch themselves. No. And so men pitch themselves by, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Sure, I'd love to do that. Absolutely, I'll run for that. Women think about all the things why they can't do it or that it's going to get in the way to do it. And so that's sometimes taking that opportunity to say, hey, that's what I want. How do I get there? Who do I need to speak to? And I'm going to figure it out. Now, granted, typically, right, they're running the household. They're taking care of parents or the family, like there's just a different day that we're in now. But if COVID has taught us nothing else, is that women will start a hobby and turn it into a business that can be a thriving business if they can just see themselves, like you said, running the business. Yeah. Yeah. And we can. And that's, for me, it's so inspiring. And one of my pet passions right now is really helping women learn how to work in the cycle and and I'm going to say the environment, for lack of a better word in a second, uh, that works for them so that they're not trying to grow a business like a corporation. And that because you are, I mean, most of, I have a lot of women entrepreneur friends at this point in my, my spinning around the planet. So, I mean, thousands at this point and everybody that I know has multiple obligations and multiple responsibilities in a different way than guys do. They have us pulled in a lot of different directions and we, we can't, and we shouldn't be trying to work like a guy because our bodies just don't work that way anyways. And this, I keep seeing, and maybe it's the algorithm, but I keep seeing articles and social people talking about overwhelm and burnout and anxiety 
And it really comes from one being out of alignment, but also working too much and trying to hit all of these these people, places, targets, goals. That are on the list. Yeah, that's not sustainable. Right. So that goes into the name of your podcast, Travel Leaders. Yeah. What is a leader to you? What oh my God. Leader? Leader and what is the-, <laughs> yeah. the reason oh. why um, I chose that name was one is really about community building. But for me, everybody is a leader. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. There are days when you have to pick yourself up off the floor and lead yourself out the door to go do something that you don't want to do. And you also have a way of making impact on other people all of the time. And I don't care if that's your kids or you're speaking to 10,000 people. So it's acknowledging that and being more intentional. And the couple of, of pieces of feedback I get from the podcast all of the time from my listeners, so that would be all of you, is that they re- everybody really appreciates everybody's story because, oh, I'm going through this thing right now um, that so-and-so talked about, or, oh, I hadn't thought about that this way, but I can take that and run with it in my life. Um, I'm so glad that, that so-and-so shared you know, their experience with this because I've had that in the past too and I thought I was the only one. So it's those stories that connect us all. And I think there's a lack of community and connection in the world right now and certainly a lack of listening deeply. So I hope that that this podcast is doing that where we can listen to each other and listen to people's stories that are all different, but we're all the same at the same place. So we're all leaders. Mm-hmm. leadership is different than being leader. What is yeah. leadership to you? At least in my opinion, my thought, I look at it. No, I would agree because you can be a leader and still not have great leadership and or be, a, be I'm going to say have great leadership, but it can look very different. So for me, it's the openness and transparency. It's um, one of the things, and my kids inspired me over and over again as a single mom in really stepping up my game in leadership and and how I was raising them. And one of the things that I did very differently, but that has worked so well um, in their young, um, I'm going to say almost adult, but they're 21 and 23. I don't even know them yet. And I'm like... (laughs) They're men. <laughs> they're your babies, but they're men. <laughs> yes. And they are because they're like totally living their own grown up lives. Okay. Uh, so my babies. But there was an openness and a transparency that I created with them where I gave them opportunity to, to one, be heard and then tell me that, you know, they didn't want to do karate anymore, even though they were about to get their brown belt. Um and that they were like, you know, totally rocking it and knocking it out of the park and and honor them for that, allow them to choose something else. I gave them a lot of say in what we did as a family um, with the understanding that we were also working very fluidly. So there were a lot of conversations about you're going to clean up the kitchen because we're a family and if you want to do something fun, this is how it works. <laughs> right. But even now when we go to dinner and war like at somebody's house like they're the first two to get up and start cleaning cleaning up and participating and um and really honoring that person with just helping out and being being polite which for me is really important because they're still young and for me there's always you want to appreciate wisdom and the people that you're around Absolutely. And there's also understanding the space for what you're in and the moments for what you're in. And it takes two seconds to say, to pick up something and go to the kitchen. Even though it goes, no, 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 that's not for you. The gesture of understanding that that needs to happen will mean so much to someone sometimes. And maybe they actually need the help or they don't want the help and they just want you to stay in the moment. But to see that someone recognizes, um, the effort you've put in to something and to say, I just want to give a little something back makes a big difference because that's business. How, how we move in our family sometimes, not always, reflects how we 
can move and look in business. So, you know, for everyone out there raising, whether it's boys or girls, children, yours or anyone else's, anyone that you consider as children under your way, that village, that tribe, you need to think that this is how you're instilling how they show up one day for yeah. others. <laughs> yeah. And it's really cool now that they're, and I'm air quoting men. <laughs> <laughs> There are men. <laughs> the relationship we have now, because what in the transparency of even acknowledging, like when I wasn't having a good moment, I still maintained, you know, my authority and, and my role as person in charge. And that's still true today, lesser because obviously they have their own grown up lives, but they still come to me for guidance and mentorship. And that's what it's been about for me all along is not being this authoritarian person, but giving them enough rope so that they can mess up and I can support them and also give them space so that they can grow into who they want to be and the openness and trust and non-judgment so that they do want to come to me as a guide and a mentor. Oh, that is great. I think that is amazing. And again, if you're running a business, that's All exactly what you need to do. Yeah. Because honestly, you have to release. You know, I working with inventors, sorry, inventors, if you're out there, but haven't worked as many. <laughs> and I be like, give it to me. <laughs> it's time. And they're tinkering, they're tinkering, they're tinkering, and tinkering. You're so busy tinkering that you never release it. And there's a time where you have to say, I have I have done the, the foundation. The foundation will continue to grow. But I must be listening to the world and have the flexibility to say that didn't work. Now we need to shift. We need to put it. We need to come back. We're doing too much. And so that that same way, again, how you raise children or look at how you look at your life is how you have to look at business. There is not one way any, that that one way of doing business is no, there's no such thing. Any. No. And I think like that. The more we look at how do I run a business and grow a business according to what works for me and my mission and my purpose and who I am, the stronger we're going to be. And the people that are supposed to work with you, both as a team and your clients, will show up, right? We all, yeah. I mean, we all have a little bit of unique crazy and our unique crazy partners will show up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what for all women that go well. I don't have transferable skills. I'm staying at home. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't have children, but I know that I honor every friend that I have that have children. I'm like, there are days, how do I get up and get out the door? And I'm someone that's up at five o'clock and ready to go. But there's still days that I'm like, oh, and I think of a friend. They have two that they're trying to get ready for right now and themselves. Right? You have transferable skills. Oh, yeah. You have organization skills. You have timing. You have negotiation skill to have a lot of things that don't dismiss that because that is a leader and that is part of leadership. Absolutely. And anybody who has managed a teen or a toddler, like <laughs> that is a skill <laughs> that, <laughs> that will take you far. Because <laughs> they both, both of those groups want everything all of the time on their time frame. And they're like herding cats. Yeah. And sometimes that's your clients. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. So what's next for you? What's next for you in your business? I don't do five-year plans. That's long. If we had talked about this five years ago, will we be sitting where we are today? No. no. Well, I mean, I do like to vision out five years, but it's, it's a moving target um, because I'm constantly realigning, right? So for me right now, I'm about to launch... The Tribe, which is my new group program, and really excited about that, um, partly because, the, well, the way I'm building it is you'll have access to me, but you have this access to the community of women that are in the tribe. And my goal is to have some of the best education and training for women entrepreneurs in all areas of business. And to really help you be on your way to becoming the CEO of your business as well. So there's a lot of foundational work, but we cover um, everything from marketing and sales to how to hire your first either employer or contract worker. 
and then expand and grow your team and then what systems you want to be putting in place and when you should be doing some of those things as well. And then the next level for me in 2023 is really starting to have some super fun events because there is nothing better than a business <laughs> event <laughs> dressed up as a party. I was just say, all I know is if there is a luncheon, I always want to be an honorary tribe member. <laughs> Yes, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. One of the things I was doing right before COVID hit and I was just starting to take off was um, the community table. So I was marrying my love for cooking and and my former catering experience with interesting conversations. So once a month I was um, making dinner for 10 to 15 people. And the rule was that we were going to have a conversation based on the topic I picked, but you weren't <laughs> allowed to give your 30 second commercial. You were not allowed and you had to. No, like you know. there are six gajillion networking groups out there. You could network three times a day, 365 days a year in Philly. We don't need another networking group. It's not what I wanted to, to achieve. I wanted to have conversations and build relationships and business will get done because of that. So we talked about all different types of things and it was really fun because the first one, we had like 12 people and I always had um, icebreaker questions to get the conversation rolling. And I think I think one of the questions was like, where's your favorite place to travel or where have you been that's your favorite place? And halfway through the group, I mean, everybody's got their bones out and we're scrolling through pictures of like, have you been here and there? And that's what's the, the magic. So what I envision with the tribe is having that event again once I get settled in Charlotte. So you're going to have to come visit. And I know, oh, and then mm-hmm. expand it into oh. different <laughs> cities. <laughs> if anyone is listening, you can't see my eyes rolling. And my head going bopping. Right. That fine. Yeah. I'll come to Charlotte personal, if I can eat. <laughs> personal bias thing that I don't want her to leave, but <laughs> I will be back. Yes. Well, maybe we'll have to do one before I leave here in Philly again. I'm thinking about. It. I'm actually going to go look at a space on Friday, so we'll okay. keep posted. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that is great. I, I love where you're going and what you're doing and your passion to move things forward. And mm-hmm. so many people, like you said, come to you because they are stuck. Yeah. And the greatest joy of working with people is that off-top moment that they have the power to move. And so I applaud you for helping people, women especially, look at themselves, review their business, and realize they have the power to keep moving. Thank you. I mean, that's so meaningful for me. And yeah, it's, we just, I just had my um, client retreat. So my high level clients, you, I mean, we talked about this the other day, they get to come and hang out with me for two days, four times a year. And it's really an amazing bonding time and the ideas that are generated. Um, and one of the things I did differently this time, because no two retreats are ever the same, but everybody got some one-on-one coaching time with me. And one of the ladies was like, oh, we're going to the windshed. <laughs> and it was hysterical. Well, never- it's, everybody got so much value out of it, but it was a sacred space too, where uh, with a lot of them, I was calling them out on stuff that they were really stuck on. And, mm-hmm. and there was, it was emotional. And I feel so blessed that they trust me to be able to hold that space for them and help them move through whatever piece it is and and really be supportive on the other end of it. And then it's always great to see everybody really like ramped up and, and taking action on the other side of, of these weekends too, because they're looking at everything very newly. Well, it's accountability with support. See, a lot of people say, I'm going to hold you accountable. But they, there's no direction on sometimes the accountability or what the yeah. expectation, what that accountability is. Yeah. And in order to be accountable, some of you need to have an expectation. And for some, they need the additional support in different ways to keep moving. And so I am sure when they uh, um, sit with you, they know they're going into the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to take it. Or know that they may have to go sit in the corner for a minute <laughs> and just let it sink in. So yeah. that's great. That it's not rare. It's all. It's not often that you find someone that you can have that trust 
with action to move that, that you know can really help you move forward? It's not. So I'm really, <clears throat> and it's a two-way street. Like it's, you know, I'm there and they have to take advantage of what I can help them with. So if they're not open, I can't help. And that's what I was going to say. So what's your perfect client? And you just said it. Someone has to be open. Yeah. <laughs> like you can be but tired of being in the same space and not be open. Right. Yeah. So. And I'll take that back. Not that there's a perfect client, but I will say a client that you enjoy working with yeah. has to be open. I, yeah. I feel the same way on my side. Yeah. So that's all you could ask of anyone is right, to be open. It's their journey. Like people can't move and change and create shifts on my time frame. It has to be theirs. Absolutely. And, you know, frequently we revisit things just like in life. <laughs> right? I always think one day I'm going to be out of this, this box. So I need to make sure that whatever we're discussing, you're committed and accountable for it. Mm -hmm. Because when I leave this box, I don't want you to go, but Leslie said, I want you to go, I know how to. Yeah. I'm yeah. prepared to take these next steps. And that's true for me too. I know a lot of coaches want to keep their clients forever. So they kind of keep them in this like, I don't know, hamster wheel where they only get so far. My goal is for my clients to stay with me for as long as it's beneficial and then to release them so they can go do the magic on their own and and then create whatever is next for them. And will they need another coach at some point? Probably. Like, <laughs> right fit? Maybe. But that's not my goal. Like, right. I, don't, I want people to be able to do their lives independently. You know, I, yeah, that is a good goal. And that should yeah. be the goal. So for those that are looking for our coaches, make sure that they're a fit for your advancement and not just the coach's advancement. Yeah. And so that anyone should know that uh, that's you. <laughs> that's they should, question. right? <laughs> that, that is what we do. That is your approach. And that is not always what is said or heard. So yeah. Uh, and I've said to clients, like, it's time. Like, you have to go fly. You don't need me anymore, and I'm not going to renew you. Wow. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because look, the support will always be there when needed. But if you <laughs> don't we'll do it, then we are just been hanging out together. That's what I always say. Then we just hang it out. Which is great, but we can do that socially. So, uh, you know. Okay, for friends. <laughs> <laughs> So I love that. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing your your personal life, your work life, and pieces and parts of your journey. I hope for all of your clients that are listening and for all the new people that listen to your podcast, that you know that when working with Emmy and the Tribe of Leaders, you're working with someone that looks at humanity, your peace, your soul, and your advancement for betterment. Thank you. I really, I appreciate that and taking it all in. And I do, like, I really, really care about my clients and just everybody in general. Like, I want people to be happy. And that's how I see, like, the world changing and it being, I don't know, well, one, more peaceful, but inclusive and, and healing all of the wounds that seem to be out there right now. And we have to look at ourselves and know who we are, the I am. So yeah. we we're out, we are. Yeah, absolutely. Because we all are divine in our own way. Yes. So. <laughs> Love that. Oh, yeah. For a while, I made Brian was 12 and he was really obnoxious and disrespectful and he had a lot of hormones going through him. So for a while, if he wanted me to talk to him, I made him call me Madam Empress. <laughs> sure he loved that. Oh, he did every second of it, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> so. Yeah. People get a point it's, it's, at some point, usually. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you want something or need something. Yeah. And I did a lot of things with humor. Mm -hmm. So, like, while that wasn't a joke, uh, he did have to do that. It still right. was better than me grounding him or when yelling at him or yeah. being the nag. I'm just like, here's the game, dude. Play along. <laughs> okay. And that's the thing. We have to know how to bob and weave. Yeah. Just because a, a book says do it this way. How does it work for you? How do you put your personality and your spin into whatever it is you're doing? That's what makes each of us different. 
If you're out there trying to build a business or raise a family and you say you're going to do it like this one because they were successful, they were successful for them. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean it may work for you. Pieces of it may. So understand, take the pieces that will help you become whole. Don't try to be whole through someone else's. Absolutely. You're yeah. brilliant. <laughs> you got <okay. laughs> And with that, I know we have to wrap up. I'm so bummed. I know. <laughs> it's always a pleasure being with you. It's always Thank a great you. time. Same. Well, same here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so grateful for each and every episode that you tune in and listen to. And I hope that you get a ton of value that you can implement starting today. I do have just a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind hopping on to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review, it would help us tremendously so that the Tribe of Leaders podcast can be found more easily and help inspire other entrepreneurial leaders. 